Today we are going to take you on a geological field trip to the Hook Head Peninsula in County Wexford. This place is famous by the lighthouse built by Normans over 800 years ago and it is believed to be one of the oldest operational lighthouses in the world. In a way, the lighthouse is also connected with the geology of this area as it was constructed from the local limestone. So we are taking a group of university students to do geological mapping exercise. No, these are not our students. Yes, these are our students heading to the first study area on the eastern side of the Hook Head. This field trip was organized by a few lecturers from the Geology Department of the University College Cork, who are now trying to locate themselves using the smartphone technology. And now Dr. Patmir will introduce us to the geology of this area. One of the absolutely classic areas of Irish geology. As you can see, the weather is typical for uh, this part of the world. It's raining and it's quite windy. We've got a group of uh, third year into fourth year uh, students, university students here, and they're studying the, uh, the Carboniferous, the Devonian Carboniferous sequence uh, in this part of the world. There's a fantastic array of different types of sedimentary rocks here, and they can study the transition from different environments uh, through that sequence. And in addition, uh, and this is what makes it particularly useful, is that we have a set of structures here, faults, uh, that allow, you know, enable the students to map out different uh, fault bound blocks in the area. So it, 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 it's a, a great place for, for undergraduates to uh, learn their mapping and hone their mapping skills. Have a look and see, from pretty much from where we first saw it back there, how it's distributed along the shore here. It's the same unit. So we're seeing it over there, and that little promontory, we're seeing it here. And here, the break here for the security and continuity. There's certainly something going on at the back of that little hole, hole there. This is what, what you needed to do because in order to work this out, you need to take it in 3D about what how the faults might be offsetting it, and you have relative differential uplift or subsidence on those blocks that allow that to be repeated. That's actually a very nice exercise for you to first half of the, of the morning. Go back, get the dips, do, do a couple of quick kind of field sketches as well, get your head around where you're seeing the breaks, where you're seeing the change, and see if you can work out a kind of simplified cross-section. that you build up the, the, the different orientations of the units because these are different blocks between, between faults, yeah? And if you're doing a cross-section, this is a really useful thing to have. Okay, so we're back here on the beach uh, and uh, on the eastern side of uh, Bookhead and you'll see on the beach here we've got some lovely ripples, a series of uh, scale ripples you can see nice curved curvy linear crests in those ripples and they seem to be fairly symmetrical in other words the lean the soft side of roughly the same geometry these are modern features obviously they're associated the last time the tide was in here if we now look at the rocks we can look at uh, some ancient ripples in the rocks as well and they're giving us a real and direct uh, link and relationship uh, and an insight I should say into the ancient environment into the paleo environment uh, in which these rocks were laid down in have a look at those. Down here at a bedding surface, obviously it's tilted from the its original horizontal position and that's due to later deformation of this sedimentary rock. But on the upper surface of that uh, bedding surface we can see a set of a series of ripples. Similar in as when we talk about process, they were formed a very similar process uh, to the ripples that we just saw on the modern beach. In this case, they probably represent a slightly deeper marine environment. We're in a kind of a shallow marine environment um, that was probably not a, not, not a beach environment, but an environment immediately offshore. But the process of forming those ripples 
is essentially the same as the process that we're seeing in operation here today. So it illustrates a, very, a key maximum in geology, the, the, uh, the present is the key to the past, uh, look at modern processes and use them to interpret ancient processes and structures. Following a quick lunch at the Hookhead Lighthouse, we're heading back into the rain to show you the geology of the western side of the Hookhead Peninsula. Okay, yeah, we're on the western side here of uh, the Hookhead Peninsula. And again, the sequence of sedimentary rocks that we see along the coastline here marks a transition from Devonian, Upper Devonian, Old Red Sandstone type rocks, sedimentary rocks, through a transitional, a shallow marine transitional sequence into the deeper water uh, but still relatively shallow marine limestones further to the south. These are all marking a transition from the Devonian into the Carboniferous. They're very well exposed here, so it offers the students a great opportunity to study in detail the paleoenvironmental changes that we see recorded in these rocks as we move from north to south along this stretch of coastline. Again, to note, the beds are tilted, so subsequently being laid down and lithified and buried and lithified, at the end of the Carboniferous period, uh, we had a mountain building event, the Veriscan mountain building event. It was compression from the south and it resulted in the folding uh, of these rocks and the faulting of these rocks. But the folding uh, that we see here is, is very nicely demonstrated in the tilting of the beds that we see here today. We can actually see a, a couple of actual fold closures along this stretch of coast as well, um, further to the south. And along this section here we're looking at uh, some of the younger rocks in the sequence. These are the limestones that represent the start of quite a thick sequence of limestones that extend all the way south to the end of the, the, Hook, the Hook Peninsula. And if you look closely at this you'll see they're absolutely packed with fossiliferous material. There are little crinoid ossicles, which are the small little circular discs. You've got um, corals. You can see some lovely corals here. And you've got some um, shells, probably bivalves of some sort. So quite a variety of um, fauna preserved, shelly fauna preserved in this, these limestone. see here is a lovely example of a sudden break in the uh, orientation of bedding. The beds that we're looking at here, these are interbedded limestones and mudstones. Very, very distinct. Thinly bedded um, limestones with intervening mudstones and shales. They're dipping in this direction in towards the that hill cliff that we see making up the, the back of the, the section here. So they're dipping off, pretty much dipping off to the east. And as we walk along the beach, we're still dipping off to the east. Suddenly we cross this zone here where there's no outcrop and the orientation of the beds changes dramatically. now notice that we've got again these are thicker bedded uh, limestones so the sequence is different in composition but uh, dramatically you see now these beds are suddenly dipping off to the south so we clearly have and we do have a major fault structure running through here that has disrupted uh, the orientation of the beds so this is one of a number of important faults that we see along this stretch of coastline that break up the stratigraphy. So we need to be very careful when we're looking at the stratigraphy, in other words, the relative ages of the different sedimentary units, that we take into account the possible disruption of the position of that stratigraphy due to these type of structures, due to these faults. Here. This is the main fault here, but quite often close to the main fault, you'll see um, minor faults associated with that. And here we've got a lovely example of that. We've got a fault running through here. We 
got a distinct limestone bed on the right hand side that's what we call the hanging wall block it's hanging on the fall surface this is the foot wall block that block has subsided with respect to the foot wall so we've got what we call a normal or an extensional fault minor extensional fault in all likelihood associated with this much larger feature here uh, to the further to the immediate south as we move further north along the coast looking off in the distance there it's very obvious that we're looking at increasing the uh, more red units more red bed units you can see some sandstones and conglomerates we're moving down into the upper devonian sequence which was a, a sequence laid down in a arid desert-like environment sub-arid environment hence the color that we see in the rocks today benefits of walking along shorelines like this and looking at the rocks is that quite often you as a somebody out walking has the potential to come across some very very interesting um, features for one thing these rocks are absolutely packed certainly in the hook head and, and in the south of hook head they're packed with fossils and as you can see here we've got a whole array of, of bivalves of shellfish of crinoids these are the, the, the bivalves and we've got crinoid ossicles if we just look here there's one there these are little discs of sea lilies um, and you can see that in this particular level that we're looking at here the bulk of the material is actually made up of fossils so if you're interested in fossils this is a great place to come and look and explore uh, and find something for yourself something unique uh, in the, the geological history of our of our country.